Hey guys, William here, and today I'll be doing a review of a laptop. And what you see before you is the S46CM. This is a 14.1 Ultrabook from ASUS, and I bought it from BestBuy.ca for around $700. So it was uh, tax included, comes to around $800. Now the turnaround time for this product was around two business days, because I placed the order on Saturday, and I was able to get it by Tuesday. So that's very impressive. As a first time shopper, with BestBuy.ca, I'm very impressed with the speed, and also I'm very impressed with how easy it was to price match. So you know, I'm looking forward to do more business with the with Best Buy, I guess. So, anyways, a quick brief overview of this laptop in terms of spec. It comes with an Ivy Bridge i5 processor. It comes with six gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. It has a one TB hard drive to start with. And uh, it comes with a GT635M video card, which allows you to play some of the newer games, or not newer games, but some of the more modern games on medium setting. At the same time, it also has an Intel HD 4000 card. So if you're running some applications that's not intensive, like games, then you're able to switch to that graphic card and thus save more power. And that really pretty much translates to doing more on your laptop away from the charger. So that's always good. Uh, so in terms of packaging, so to quickly show you, I'm a really big fan of unboxing, but this is the box it came in. There you go. They're very boring, very dull. If you want to look at the spec here, you can have a look over here, but you can check all the details on the ASUS.C website. And obviously, this is the Best Buy package it comes in. It's got plenty of foam to make sure your product gets there in one piece. It's very good. Now, in turn, all of accessories pretty much comes with only the charge pad. But apart from that, it also comes with manuals. In this case, you're looking at the notebook PC user manual, which is something you want to read at when you're bored. It's also got three different variations of the Windows 8 startup guide. And I believe one of them is English, Spanish, and of course French because we're in Canada. And you have your notebook warranty card, so that's probably something you want to look at in case your computer burns up. Okay, so moving back to the review here, looking at the laptop unit itself. I'm just going to quickly talk about the exterior, the overall design. So I'm going to close it for a moment. So let's give you some measurements, some numbers. So from here to here, the laptop measures to be around 34.8 centimeters. Now from there to here, it's around 24.8 centimeter going across here. And in terms of the actual thickness here, we are looking at a paltry 2.1 centimeter. So it's indeed a very thin laptop. So this is 2.1 centimeters thick and it only weights to be around 2 kg so it's actually not too bad for something that actually has a discrete graphic card in there now obviously some sacrifices need to be made to retain this 2 kg and uh, that's pretty much in the form of battery packs in this case what you see here is the thin battery pack stretching from this end to this end and you can see that it doesn't actually protrude out on the back unlike some of the laptops which means it has, uh, I guess, lower capacity. And in this case, you're looking at a four cell lithium battery was around uh, 2,950 amper. And that pretty much translates to around four hours of average use, or you know, average usage, which includes a little bit of web browsing, a little bit of uh, Microsoft Office Suites, a little bit of Gmails, and you know, not really high intense gaming stuff. So that's around four hours. Uh, when you are playing the game, however, it seemed to last around two hours for me from a full charge because I was playing StarCraft 2 on medium setting and the battery was pretty much ran out around two hour mark. So that, you know something to keep in mind to have your charges with you when you're going to be playing some games. Okay, so let me just quickly show you some of the ports on this laptop here. For instance, or for starters, we have the SD card reader in the front here. And then we have the notification LEDs on the top here. It's very non-intrusive. 
very good placement. I like that. Uh, from this end here, you can see that it's got the power input here. So we charge your laptop. It's got the exhaust for the video card. It's got the VGA port for your display output, and also it has an HDMI included. An RJ45 Ethernet socket for you to connect to your local area network. And you have your USB 3.0 jacks or USB 3.0 port here for you to use. I think another feature ACES included for this laptop was the fact that this port here can also be used or can still be used when the laptop is closed, which means that if you want to charge your cell phones or your um, little peripherals while you're away, you can do that by just plugging it in. And on the other side here, we have the Kingston lock port. We have the DVD drive, DVD burner actually. Then we have two USB 2.0 port, which I have used for my uh, mouse for one of them. And finally, you have your 3.5 millimeter jack for the microphone and also for the headphones. So that's nice. Now, let's look at the bottom there for a moment. Just quickly show you what it offers. So this is the back side here. If you can see here, let me try to zoom in a little bit for you because this is the interesting part. This is obviously the battery pack. It's very small, very slim, it doesn't stick out as I said before. Now what's interesting is the placement of the speaker grills. They're actually in the back of the units, which means the sound actually resonates from underneath the keyboard. Uh, most times they're a little bit fuzzy, or more, what should I say? They're a little bit fuzzy, so it's not very good. But you know, usually I use a headphone when I'm out, so it's not a really big deal for me. And also, it's got a lot of uh, accessibility. So as you can see here, by just removing these two screws, I'm able to access the hard drive and RAM module. So let me just quickly show you how that's done here. Oh boy. Oops. Okay, so I took the battery out already. Oh, sorry, I took out the screws already to save some time. So essentially, you just pull out and lift up. And voila, there's access to the ports. So you're looking at the hard drives. So this is uh, used to be a 1TB Scorpio hard drive on Western Digital. And you're also looking at the RAM slot here, which by default configuration is six gigabytes. So obviously, you or I think you still you're still able to add in one more slot, which means you can get a combination of up to I believe eight gigabyte if you want to. So, anyways, let me just quickly show you the hard drive it came with. So this was a hard drive that came with is Western Digital 1.0 TB hard drive. It only spins to around 5400 RPM, so really it's a little bit slow for my taste. So I actually swap it out for a solid state drive. So later on we'll be looking at the benchmarks and I'll be showing you my SSD benchmarks based on the Windows 7 operating environment. Okay. Having said that though, this laptop does come with Windows 8. It's just that because I swapped the hard drive, I decided to use Windows 7 instead since I'm not really fond of Windows 8 just yet. Uh, what else? From here you can also see the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth adapter or the modules for it. And there, I believe it's running, um, let's see here, this is AWNB097. For those of you who are tech savvy, you'll find out that it's actually a pretty decent chipset, which means the signals are pretty good in the sense that there's not a lot of drop hitch when using them pretty much has a pretty good has a pretty good range and uh, you know can't really complain about that a lot of other laptops have problems like the Samsung N9 series might have some problems with their Wi-Fi just because it's built too close to the aluminum I believe but anyways that's pretty much the back of the case in a nutshell just put it back there and, and off we go with the review, I guess.
So obviously in the front, you notice that it's the same aluminum design used for a lot of the other Asus laptops. This one goes, the aluminum streaks goes across. And essentially, it's a pretty big finger mag magnet. So if you just see that, I put my hand on it a little bit. I've already see my own fingerprints. So if you're going to take this outside, be sure to bring a lint-free cloth to wipe it. So your laptop doesn't look disgusting. Hey guys, welcome back to the review. So right now we'll be looking at the laptop's keyboard and how it performs. So from what you can see, the laptop keyboard are of checklist designs, which means that they are for a short travel distance, and they're also super quiet. Now notice that there's a lot of the gaps in between are just perfect, just wide enough so you don't actually make a mistake when you're typing. And I really appreciate it. I almost feel like it's a MacBook Pro. And it should because the aluminum piece you see here are actually all composed of one piece, which means that it offers very little flex when you're typing. So especially in the middle here, usually some of the cheaper keyboard will have that little creaky noise or that you know could be depressed and actually press all the way down when you are typing. And it's just not the case with this laptop. And another thing you see is that it's got very clean design overall. The only LED on is the power LED, which is all clear on this side. Everything else is tucked away nicely at the edge of the screen, so you won't see any notification lights. Um, let's look at a look. Look at the screen size here because that's what you'd be looking at when you're looking at the computer. The screen is a 14.1 inch display, LED display actually, and the resolution is 1366 by 768. So <coughs> that pretty much is that it's not on the HD. And uh, also, if you notice, or if you haven't noticed already, it has a okay, it has a decent viewing angle. But not obviously not on the same class as say those IPS panels you see on the newer ultra books such as the ZenBook Prime or the Samsung and I believe the N9 series. So that's too bad they didn't include it. But you know for the sake of price, remember this is a seven hundred laptop, seven hundred dollar laptop. So obviously some budget constraint has been made to make it competitive. Um. What I was gonna say about it, this here is uh, made of plastic, so this plastic bevel here. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's covered by uh, aluminum backings, so it's actually very uh, sturdy. As well, you can see the construction is very, it's actually very adhesive. You can see for yourself that actually pretty much sticks very well to it. Um, other than the screens, we're looking at the cameras here. We have a uh, web camera capable of HD definition, I believe, up to 720p. And it also has a microphone jack here or microphone port, so you can hear yourself talk if you're doing Skypes, or you can hear, or other party can hear you speak when you speak into the microphone port. This one here is actually just a LED light, which it, which will turn on when the web camera is on to show you that hey you're being recorded kind of thing so I thought that's pretty nifty <coughs> other than that there is uh, some rubber feet over here some rubber feet on the bottom here to protect the laptop <coughs> screen from the keyboard when it's closed and I think that's pretty much it about the screen let's just go back to the laptop here in terms of uh, comfortability, the edges here are actually fairly well rounded, which means that it will not agitate your wrist during prolonged use, unlike some of the other notebooks they have right now. I believe the Zen book is a little bit too sharp, so it kind of cuts the edge a little bit. And that's the same problem with the MacBook, or not MacBook, but the, the MacBook Air laptop is a little bit sharp on the side, so that's a problem. Uh, in the next segment of the review, I will log in to the laptop and just show you some of the benchmarks I did. All right, 
So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Hi guys, welcome back to the second segment of this review. And right now we're looking at some of the benchmarks. Here you can see is the Windows 7 Experience Index, and it rates the laptop settings out of, uh, I believe, 7.9. And right now you see the review gives a 5.1 setting for overall performance. Internal breakdowns, processor, which is i5 core, uh, 3317U scores around 6.9. The RAM, 6 gigabyte of DDR3 RAM, scores around 7.2. That's out of 7.9 once again. And graphic card for the Intel HD 4000 integrated card, it scores a 5.1 setting. And uh, when you're playing games, switch to the GT 635M, which gives a rating of 6.4. And last but not least, you have the solid state drive, which I'm running right now. And obviously, because it's solid state, it gets a rating of 7.9 out of 7.9. So that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Moving on, we're looking at some of the CPU Z uh, informations. So as you can see here, it is indeed running an Ivy Bridge computer or Ivy Bridge CPU. And I'll just quickly show you the motherboard information Asus K46CM. A lot of interesting stuff. Memory, you're looking at 6 GB of them. DDR3, they're clocked at 800 megahertz. I, I'm guessing they get ramped up when you're using it. Uh, speed, pretty much more stuff to do with the RAMs. Graphic card, because you're looking at it from Windows, not really running any intensive program in the background. Therefore, it's only using an Intel graphic card. So that's what you see here. And it's 2 GB. Uh, okay, um, idle, you're looking at a temperature core of around 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. So I left this laptop on for around two hours. So that's pretty much the idle temperature it gets when I'm just doing a little bit of browsing, a little bit of uh, internet, a little bit of office suite stuff. So that's a typical usage temperature. And in this temperature range, the fan does not ramp up, so your computer is actually pretty nice and quiet. Now, you might hear a little bit of fan noise in the background, but that's mostly from my other PC, which is used to record this video. Okay, so having said that, why don't we try running a little bit of game, and I'll just quickly show you guys how it performs. So in this case, I have a Deuce EX. So let's run that and see how it goes. So it runs pretty smooth for the most part. Now I wasn't able to get a frame rate count, but uh, I'll just quickly show you what I have here so far. So it's actually, you see, it's actually not too bad in terms of uh, graphic settings. I believe right now it's set to medium on everything. And resolution running is the default 1366 by 760, or sorry, by um, oh, 768. Yeah, that's right. So that's what you get. That's the overall view. It's very smooth. I'm able to wiggle my um, camera around without much lag. Actually, pretty much with no lag. Jensen? What are you doing? It's pretty smooth. So that's not too bad at all. So it's this game is totally playable at the same. So I'll just quickly show you what the setting is. Uh, right now, again, I'm running one three six six by seven sixty eight, and uh, everything else is the same. I'll just show you the graphics settings. 
direct X11 is on, anti-leasing is on MLAA, shadows are normal, depth of field is on normal, post processing is on, filter is on trilling layer. So it's pretty much the regular setting. And yeah, it works very well. I'm not too sure if I can actually go into a fight. Let's try this one. Let's try this one. I think this is one of the intro levels in where there's a little bit of gunfight. Firefight. So let's just see how it fares. So no lag. Just I'm sucking and dying. Oh no, it flashed me. Obviously, I'm a very horrible shooter, but I think I got everyone. So there you go, a little bit of firefight sequence. So again, this game is totally playable, no problem whatsoever. So you can see the foulness of the video part. Okay, so having said that, I'm just gonna close this game and let's run it StarCraft and see what happens. Just give me a sec there. I didn't want to make this video too long, but it's mostly just showing you guys what the video would be, what the game would be like when you're running this. So you can kind of hear the fan ramp up a little bit, but no biggie. Now let's run a little bit of StarCraft and see what happens. So you guys gonna have to pardon me for a moment while I enter my password. So in the meantime, you can have a look at my nice, uh, I guess my nice TV. So just give me a sec to set up, and I'll be right back. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so for StarCraft, I have it set with this setting right now. Resolution is 1280 by 720. Full screen, medium, everything for the most part. Lighting is low. Models on low. Movies on low. Just to reduce the lag, there's actually pretty much zero lag when I'm playing the game. So I'm just going to do a quick custom game. Just because... I don't. Just because it's custom. Oh, game's not playable. No problem. We will just make one. I will fight an AI and just show you guys how quickly this goes. So I'm just going to turn it light off, just so it focuses on the screen itself instead. So we have a look, better look to how it displays. So, play StarCraft. Not enough minerals. Camera, I'm just a little bit weird. Not enough minerals. Totally doable. Not enough minerals. You can see no light whatsoever. I'm able to scroll on the screen. I'm going to zoom in the details, no problem. Not enough minerals. 
Not enough. SCB ready. I don't have any replays to show you guys, so that's unfortunate. But yeah, this game runs really well, even even when you're playing 2v2. So that's very good. So after we're done with this quick demo here, I'm just gonna show you how high the temperature can get on this unit. So just bear with me while I uh, need to fix my build order. Additional supply depots required. Okay, supply blocks. I love this game. Uh, I can't build here. So that makes it very hard to play with the camera over my side. So yeah, just take, take my word for it. It runs very smooth. There's no problem to playing one on one. And no none whatsoever at my setting at least. So anyways, that is pretty much I'm gonna as far as I'm gonna go for this. And I'm just quickly show you what the temperature is like right now. I just get demoted? I guess I did. Okay, hold on tight. Uh, so we need to grab hardware monitor again, just so I can quickly show the temperature. So as you can see, it does go up for a bit. It's around 70 degrees Celsius. If Had I been playing the game for, let's say, one or two hours, the temperature will obviously go up higher. Uh, from my experience so far, playing StarCraft for two hours straight, temperature goes up to around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. And even then, it's still not too hot. The only part that gets hot is the palm rest here. I mean, not the palm rest, but the keyboard section gets a little bit warm. This palm rest gets slightly warm, but it's nothing very discomforting, so to speak. So that is pretty much all I have to say about this laptop. So if you guys have any questions, or any concerns, or anything you want me to go over with this particular models, please do let me know and leave a comment below. And yeah, this is William, and thanks guys for watching. Hey guys, William here, and right now we're just testing a webcam because I forgot this in the review. So you notice that there's a white LED on right now, and it pretty much is on whenever the webcam is on. I'm not too sure if that's the same for the microphone, but uh, yeah, I think it's very nice to have an indicator tell you that you're on the air. So there we go. Thank you.